Well, hello, folks. Thanks again for joining us on another local episode of What's Happening in Our Marketplace. Welcome to your June 2020 market snapshot here and now. Okay, folks, let's look at the fundamentals in June 2020. Now, as many of you may recall, there was heavy forecasts and predictions that the Australian housing market was going to collapse or at minimum experience a significant recorrection in 2020. Well, I'm pleased to note, looking at the data in June, the national housing market has come back by only 0.3%. Not bad, less than half a percent recorrection in our national housing market, considering that we faced one of the most significant health and economic pandemics for a hundred years. In fact, folks, if we look at the annual data of property growth, right now it stands that the nation's housing market growth is 8.3% still greater than it was than that of 12 months ago. So folks, drilling down more specifically to our local marketplace and what it means for us is that over the last 30 days, we've seen capital growth levels at 0.4%. But the most pleasing thing to report is that over the last 90 day period, right in the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic, is we still saw modest growth locally in our area at 1.1%. However, if we look at statistics over the last 12 months, our local marketplace has experienced capital growth at 1.8%. Not too bad signs considering we've seen one of the most significant health and economic pandemics for 100 years. Now this supports that I've been saying in a lots of my videos and content that our local marketplace is very robust, most certainly resilient, and we're right on the cusp of recovery. Now throughout the month of May, we experienced an 18.5% increase in the volume of buyer activity. What that's suggesting to me, folks, is that consumer confidence and sentiment is being reinstated, particularly now that things are starting to ease and we're getting back to a sense of normality. But as I've suggested in previous videos, the pivotal thing for our marketplace locally for the remainder of 2020 will be the amount and volume of for sale supply that comes back into the marketplace as things ease from this point forward. Now sitting down and talking to my local finance broker, Simon Beck from Your Mortgage Assistant, it was an interesting time and it would seem that homeowners and borrowers took full advantage of highly economic competitive time, particularly with lenders and interest rates. Right now the data is suggesting that 50% increase in volume of refinances in comparison to the year earlier. In fact, over the last 60 days, we've seen an uplift of 11% in refinance applications occur, which equates to about $7.9 billion worth of refinance value. Now, a lot of banks are super competitive and in some instances, some borrowers were taking full advantage of getting up to $4,000 cash back from the lender of their choice just by simply shopping around and refinancing to more competitive terms, a better product perhaps, but most certainly a more competitive interest rate. Well folks, can you believe it? We're about to close off yet again another financial year. July tax time on the horizon, a great time for consumer spend, but just a friendly reminder with respect to the change and reforms with SA land tax provisions that will come into full effect from June 30. Now these provisions will change the land tax aggregation. It also will change the rates of tax held with land in trust, but also the grouping provisions directly related to corporations. Now if you're a little bit unsure what this may mean for you and any land tax provisions from June 30, feel free to reach out to me for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. But as always, when it comes to financial advice, reach out to your accountant if you're aligned with somebody to understand what this means for you from June 30. If you're not aligned with accountant, I'd be more than happy to put you in touch with a confident accountant that I use myself personally and professionally, Darren Allison from WE Partners, who is an absolute master in this space. Okay, first time buyers, let's jump on over to you. And is there a better time to be alive and get into your first home? Well, I think not. Off the back of the federal government's announcement to add an additional $25,000 to new construction grants on offer to stimulate the national housing market, what that means for you now is that if you're a first time buyer and builder, you can take full advantage of up to $40,000 off your construction costs. $15,000 from the state government and up to $25,000 from the federal government. So with interest rates at precedent all time record lows, huge stimulus packages to help you get into your first home, there's no better time than to act now. And the reality is, is that what you're gonna be paying in your mortgage today, locking in a good rate, getting into your first home is gonna be far less than probably what you're gonna pay out there in the rental market. Now, first time buyers, most certainly there's some criteria that you'll need to meet in order to qualify for these new construction grants. 
Most certainly it is means tested and they're gonna look at your previous financial year. To qualify, you must first and foremost be an Australian resident and you must enter into a contract from the 4th of June through to the 31st of December 2020. For singles, your income must not exceed $125,000 on that previous financial year. And for couples, your income combined earnings for the previous financial year must not exceed $200,000. Your build costs and taking into consideration the purchase of your land must not exceed the total value of $750,000 in order to qualify for these grants. Okay folks, let's jump on over to your renovators delights that love getting on the jackhammer and donning the hard hat. Well guess what, there's up to $25,000 in federal government stimulus packages on offer to help you renovate your home and to help trades get back into work. Now some of the criteria for this is that your renovation costs must be between the value of $150,000 and $750,000. Again, you need to enter a contract between the 4th of June and the 31st of December 2020. Your property's total value must not exceed the value of $1.5 million. And this does not apply to add things like sheds, pools, or tennis courts. It's more so gonna be appealing to those family that need some more room and are gonna do an extension to their existing home potentially out the back or upstairs. So folks, if you've got any questions about what these state and federal government stimulus packages may mean for you, feel free to reach out to me because everyone's position is unique and I prefer to have a personalized conversation to answer any of your questions or what it may mean as part of your property aspirations for 2020. Well, folks, that wraps up your June 2020 local market update and snapshot. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Jansen. And until the next episode, it's bye for now.